guys. How you doing? Got a lot of baggage to unpack about this one. This time, it's personal. This is the true story of Love Canal in Niagara Falls. In 1834, William T. Love digs a canal designated to link the upper and lower Niagara Rivers. But by 1836, with only about 3,000 feet of the canal made, the scheme lost all financial backing. By the 1920s and 30s, the unfinished canal becomes a local swimming hole. In the 1940s, an organic chemical revolution in herbicides and pesticides provided a big boost in the Riverside chemical industries and their production of toxic chemicals. Some of the byproducts of these chemicals are themselves toxic, and tons of the residues are sealed in metal drums and buried at the Love Canal site. By 1951, housing developments are beginning to grow around this Love Canal dump site. By 1954, a school was being built, and while digging, they hit soft spots and strong fumes of chemicals. Instead of nixing the whole plan, they just moved the foundation 85 feet. By the mid-70s, over nine complaints about health problems at the Love Canal site are logged by the Niagara County Health Department, which orders all soil dumped to cover pooled liquid and exposed drums. Some of these toxins are benzene, toluene, phosphates, vinyl chloride fumes, red dye number two, and Myrex poisoning. By 1976, after three years of really heavy rains, chemicals begin to ooze into backyards and basements in and around Love Canal. By 1977, the DEC recommends that New York State take legal action against Hooker Chemical Company for their main dumping in Love Canal. By 1978, chemical contamination has been found in private homes, sub pumps in their basements, and in air samples taken in homes around Love Canal. By June of 1978, the state begins a door-to-door -door health survey campaign and taking blood samples. Did I mention I was one year old at this time and my parents had just finalized their home purchase in Love Canal. Also at this time, the health department study finally shows 81 different chemicals, including benzene, present at the Love Canal site. By August of 1978, President Jimmy Carter declares a national state of emergency at Love Canal. The 20-year-old newly built school is closed and the first two blocks around the Love Canal dump site are evacuated for pregnant mothers and children under two. That was my family. By October of 1978, only after 70% of the homes are contaminated by dioxins and lindane, the state begins construction of a chemical drainage system and removal. By November of 1978, Hooker Chemical Company finally admitted to dumping over 200 tons of dioxins in Love Canal, including 2,4,5-trichlorophenol, a compound related to dioxin. It is also the deadliest chemical ever synthesized by man. By 1979, the State Health Department finds miscarriage and birth defects very prevalent among people who live in Love Canal and they relocate even more families. By 1980, the federal government funded a $1.6 billion federal environmental cleanup. Also in 1980, New York State sued Hooker Chemical and the other chemical companies for dumping in Love Canal in the first place. By May of 1980, the EPA released a study indicating chromosomal damage to some Love Canal residents all homeowners are preparing for evacuation. By the summer of 1982, house demolitions begin. The first two closest blocks are demolished first and they are deemed uninhabitable. 
By this time, the state announces high dioxin levels at the canal. The EPA soon confirms that the chemical is present in concentrations of 100,000 times that found toxic to laboratory animals. By 1983, a study indicates children born or raised near Love Canal are smaller, tend to develop more slowly, and have more health problems than other kids. That would be me. By July of 1983, plans for the concrete retaining wall at the site are scrapped due to indications of toxins in the soil up to 40 more blocks downriver. So instead of that, by December 1st of 1984, a clay cap was installed over Love Canal to try to keep more toxins from spreading in the groundwater. In 1986, cleaning of contaminated sewer systems began, including sewers halfway across the city of Niagara Falls. By 1988, over $250 million has been estimated for cleanup of Love Canal. As of 1988, the fenced-off toxic dump site in the middle of Love Canal still remains an open and desolate field. By 1998, nearly 900 former residents receive awards from the state, ranging from $63 to $133,000 in personal injury damages. Please leave a comment below if you want to guess how much money my family got in settlement. Thanks for coming by. Always remember to forge your own path and wear Crocs a lot.